Okay, I am so ready to get clarity on on this. We're just going to tease you a little bit. Okay. But what you just said with your emphasis is, I'm so ready to get clarity upon this thing that I am so confused. I guess that's where I'm at. It's all right. But the only reason that we want to play that back to you a little bit is because in strong determination to wrestle the confusion to the ground, you only amplify it a little more. So a softer approach, I think I'm ready for this. And I'm sure looking forward to feeling the ease of, of clarity that comes over me. And it'll be so fun when I really understand this. And I'm so looking forward to the evidence of my understanding flowing into my experience. What we're trying to get you to do always is soften the gap between where you are and where you want to be. Diffuse as best you can your awareness that you're not there yet. Do you know? that the things that you really, 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 really want come harder than the things you sort of want. Because the things you sort of want, you haven't been beaten to the ground from the place of not having them. And so we know you really want it. It's why you light it up and we saw you and we know you're ready to hear it. It's why you light it up in a way that let us know that you were ready. So you don't have to defend, you don't have to justify the clarity that's going to come by amplifying the confusion that's here. That's just the point that we were making. Okay. Um, just to put it in context, when my daughter was four years old and she almost walked into Connecticut Avenue and got herself killed, almost, I was there to hold her hand, pull her back and say, that's not a good thing. She's 17 and a half now. And I've always let, tried my best to let her find her own mind. And with that one exception? Well, and this is what occurred to me because I've been listening to your tapes for a long time. And, and then it occurred to me, well, if you're looking at things from the broader perspective where death is not an issue. We're not giving you the choice of pulling her back or letting her get creamed by a truck. Those weren't the two options. In other words, and there isn't anything inappropriate about pulling your child out of the street. We're not wanting to imply that either. We just want to say that the premise that you're building here and the fact that you chose that example to put into context this story that you want to talk about, the justification that you're trying to present at the beginning here is I felt then and I still feel that I am wiser and therefore more capable of guiding her than she is. And earlier before segment of lunch, when we were talking about your relationship with anyone and your opinion is that they should listen to you because you know better you'll never win that conversation because they've got an inner being that's calling them toward their own and guidance. That is so, so happening. <laughs> so, so they've got an inner being calling them toward independence and their mm -hmm. own guidance and, and hear this. Oh, something really good and new to realize when your source is calling you toward independence, is it really independence in the sense that you are now on your own and free of all other guidance or is the calling of source and the including you in to this broader knowing is it the epitome of alignment and support system and the resources of source in other words if you could realize that if everything that you do in your interaction with anyone especially your daughter or someone that you're wanting to have a wonderful life your dominant intent at all times must be I must find a way of helping her to empower herself by helping her to seek her own guidance not mine and yet right. the gut feeling the knee-jerk reaction of so many parents is the opposite of that you can't trust your guidance trust mine in other words, you set up a war with your children that you can't win because they internally know that they should be able to follow their own path, you say. Okay, well, can I just give you a typical conversation? Yes. Where are you going? I'm going to a party. Is there any supervision? No. Will there be drinking? Yes. Will you be drinking? Yes. How are you going to get home? I don't know. Uh, Will you get in the car with a drunk driver? I might, I might not. 
well let us explain this conversation so where are you going what business is it of yours where are you going even though it's none of your business and because I know this will really bother you I will tell you where I'm going I'm going to a party <laughs> what will you be doing at that party everything that I can think of that will bother you <laughs> will you be drinking does that really bother you <laughs> you know that it does then I will be drinking a lot <laughs> will you be getting into a car with someone who is drunk while they're driving that ridiculous question deserves a ridiculous answer <laughs> of course I'm going to I'm going to present to you the picture that you expect from me because you are so sure that I do not have the ability to tend to myself in any way that is meaningful that you just make me want to show you exactly what's active in your vibration and when we have this conversation it tears me apart that you don't trust me but even more it tears me apart that you're using me as your reason to tear yourself apart Do you have do you have any more questions for me? <laughs> do you think you're going to have a good time? <laughs> I really want to have a good time. Do you think that you have guidance flowing forth from within you? I know that I do. I seek it often. Then go and use your guidance and be the powerful being that I've known you to be and live happily ever after because there is nothing that I want more than for you to live happily ever after we probably won't be drinking <laughs> in other words now you want to say but the reality is she probably will be and we want to say to you there are so many who behave defiantly because they believe that they live in a world that's gone mad that's trying to tell them what to do and they're really wanting to say the basic message that these teenagers are wanting to shout at their parents and the people who are bossing them around is you don't know you don't know if you could say to your child from a place of knowing I don't know what's best for you but you do if you could convince your child that you have in all that you've lived you've created a version of her well-being in your vibrational escrow and all you're trying to do is get to that vibrational place of alignment with that well-being and when she taunts you like that it's hard for you to find the place of well-being that you want so much when you're looking at the evidence that opposes it but you're going about it in a way that is crippling you and making her crazy when what you're basically saying is my happiness is dependent upon your behavior and she wants to say please don't lay that heavy trip on me your happiness cannot be about my behavior your happiness needs to be about your alignment and therefore about your behavior you see and we promise you that when you find that place when you come into alignment with this being who you have contributed to creating a version of in your vibrational escrow when you come into alignment with who this person really is and in doing so you will come into alignment with who you really are now you will look in this knowing way as the source within you you and the source within her looks and you will not find reason to panic or be afraid you will stand in a place of stability and you will say I know well-being is yours because I know who you are and in those conditions and only under those conditions will you even have a beginning chance of calling her toward her alignment you see it is the strangest things parents offer words and behavior that almost without exception demands that their child lose their connection with source and then they wonder why they need to take hold of their hand to keep them out of the street 
When you've convinced your child that they don't know where they're going and that they don't even have the sense not to get run over by something or not to get into a car with somebody who's driving, she doesn't have a death wish. She's not going to do something stupid. She doesn't want to come to the end of her experience, you see. But when you find that, when you are continually practicing that in your mind so that that's what you see, you cannot possibly guide her toward the alignment that would keep that from happening. And the reason that you feel bad is not, and this is the biggest thing of all, the reason that you feel bad in the midst of that conversation is not because she's in trouble and you've focused upon it and you're worried about it. The reason you feel bad in that moment is because you're in trouble and using her as the excuse. And by in trouble, we mean you're using that as your reason to rip yourself apart from who you are. And why do we say that puts you in trouble? Because when you rip yourself away from who you are chronically, you don't thrive. You don't get in your voice text you don't get the things that you're asking for including the well-being of your own daughter and eventually the manifestations at first that show up as negative emotion eventually become bigger and bigger and bigger until your physical body takes a toll in other words you damage yourself and everything about your physical experience when you beat the drum of things not wanted and refuse to change the beating of the drum unless something that you see changes so that you can beat the drum accordingly oh did you hear that You've got to decide that you're going to feel good regardless of what anybody else does. And then you'll tune into source and then you'll be one who's more powerful than millions who are not. And then you will remind your child of who she really is and who she really is, is someone who has come forth with great purpose. Someone who has a long, long life ahead of her. Someone who wants the contrast in order to ask. Someone who understands this better than we have just explained it here. Someone who feels it at the very core of her being. Someone who seeks alignment all day, every day. Someone who is tuned in, tapped in, turned on more than she ever reveals to you because you extract the opposite from her with your worry about her. It's so interesting. Children tuned in and doing well, except when they're at home under scrutiny. <laughs> Very common to see. So what are we accusing you of? <laughs> We're accusing you of the natural love that almost every human mother in the world feels. And what are we suggesting? You got to get over that. <laughs> And you can't ask your child to change in order to ease your emotions. That's your inside job. And that's why she's defiant to you. In other words, at every part of her being, she knows, hey, it's not my job to make you feel good. It's your job to make you feel good. Oh, come on. When you were little, you made me feel good all the time. Can't you do that some more? Helpful. Yeah, very. Thank you be easy about it and yeah. we appreciate your willingness to have this conversation almost every parent on the planet sits where you sit